Welcome back to LT Gaming, my name is Tom and today we're diving deep into a subgenre that has captivated gamers and myself for decades, science fiction real-time strategy games. Whether you are a seasoned strategist or a newcomer looking to explore this fascinating genre, this video is going to take you on a journey through the evolution of sci-fi RTS games from 1992 through to the present day. RTS games or real-time strategy are all about managing resources, building bases and commanding armies in real time. The sci-fi twist adds a layer of futuristic technology, alien worlds and epic space battles, making these games not just a test of strategy but also a window into creativity and imagination. In my mind RTS games fall into three distinct categories, sci-fi, fantasy and historical. Each offers unique flavour and challenges, but today we're zeroing in on the sci-fi side of things. If you feel this deep dive intriguing, let me know in the comments below and I'll gladly explore the fantasy and historical RTS realms in the future videos. Our timeline spans over three decades, from the early 90s to today. Throughout this period, certain titles have stood out, defining and redefining what it means to be a sci-fi RTS game. We've curated a list of iconic games that not only push the genre to new heights, but also remain relevant and worth your time even today. We'll break down these games into four distinct eras. Early classics, golden age, modern innovations and rise of free play. So sit back, relax and join me as we explore the milestone of sci-fi RTS games. So whether you're here for a nostalgic trip down memory lane or looking for some hidden gems that you may have missed across the decades, this video promises to deliver a comprehensive look into the evolution of a genre that has helped shape the strategy gaming landscape. The early classics era of real-time strategy games began in the early 1990s, laying the foundational mechanics and principles that would define the genre. Pioneering titles like Dune 2 and Command and Conquer introduced players to the core concepts of base building, resource management and unit control. These games were revolutionary for the time, offering players unprecedented levels of strategic depth and real-time decision making. The early classics set the stage for the genre's explosive growth, captivating gamers with their innovative gameplay and setting the standard for future RTS developments. Alright, let's kick off our journey through the annals of sci-fi RTS history with a game that's often hailed as the blueprint for the genre. Dune 2 The Building of a Dynasty While it might not be the very first RTS game, that honour arguably goes to Herzog's Vi, Dune 2 is the one that would truly set the stage for what is to become the standard mechanics and style of RTS games for years to come. Released in 1992 by the iconic Westwood Studios and published by Virgin Games, it was more of a spiritual successor to the earlier Dune game, which was more of an adventure strategy hybrid. Dune 2 however brought a whole new level of innovation and complexity to the table, creating a template that would inspire countless games that followed including titans of the genre like Command and Conquer, Warcraft and Age of Empires. The game's core mechanics were revolutionary for the time. It introduced players to the now familiar RTS elements of resource gathering, base building and unit production. Players would choose to command one of three factions, each vying for control of the desert planet Arrakis, rich with the coveted spice. The strategic depth of the managing resources, fortifying your base and launching tactical assaults against your enemies made Dune 2 an instant classic. Despite being released over three decades ago, it was praised for outstanding sound and graphics which were considered cutting edge at the time, and it was lauded as a real gem of the genre. Highlighting its gameplay as significant improvement over its predecessors, the game's influence was such that even without online play, it's still highly regarded for its replayability and overall enjoyment today. When it came to sales and reception, Dune 2 was a commercial success. Its global sales surpassed 250,000 units by 1996, and the game had an immensely positive reaction. In essence, Dune 2 didn't just set the bar for RTS games, it built the bar. Its innovative mechanics and engaging gameplay laid the groundwork for the genre that would flourish and evolve over the next several decades. If you're a fan of RTS games, revisiting Dune 2 will offer a fascinating glimpse into the roots of the genre and the innovation and spirit that sparked the entire gaming revolution in this sector. Next up we have a true titan of the RTS genre, Command and Conquer. Developed and published again by Westwood Studios in 1995, the game is set in an alternate history where two global factions, the Global Defense Initiative and the Brotherhood of Nod, are locked in a fierce battle for control over a mysterious and valuable resource known as Tiberium. 
Command and Conquer emerged during the final stages of Dune 2's development, building upon and refining the groundbreaking ideas that were introduced in that game. The team at Westwood Studios drew inspiration from contemporary events, particularly the Gulf War, to give Command and Conquer a modern warfare feel and setting that both felt immediate and relatable. The inclusion of live action full motion cutscenes featuring different employees from Westwood added a cinematic flair was really unprecedented at the time. In terms of gameplay, Command and Conquer expanded the foundations laid by Doom 2. It featured a much more sophisticated approach to resource management and base building, as players had to harvest Tiberium to fund their war efforts, construct and upgrade various buildings, and produce a wide array of military units. This complexity, coupled with intuitive controls and addictive gameplay loops, made Command & Conquer a hit with both critics and players. The game's commercial success was undeniable. It sold over 3 million copies and garnered numerous awards. And it's often cited as one of the greatest games ever made and is credited with defining and popularizing the RTS genre. The legacy of Command & Conquer is absolutely immense as a series too. It spawned a franchise that sold over 30 million copies. My touch point with the series when I was younger was Red Alert and it introduced me to this alternate history and I absolutely adore the lore of the game as well. Released in for free in 2007 to celebrate the 12th anniversary of the franchise, it remains a beloved classic and its influence is still felt today in modern strategy gaming and it stands as a testament to the innovation and creativity of a magical studio Westwood. If you're a fan of RTS games, it's a must play. It offers rich and engaging experience that laid the groundwork for the genre as we know it today. Check it out. Now, let's dive into a game that set the benchmark for strategic depth and advanced graphics in the RTS genre, Total Annihilation. Released in September 97 by Cave Dog Entertainment, Total Annihilation took the RTS world by storm with its innovative gameplay and impressive technical achievements. Set in a far future galactic war, Total Annihilation places players in the midst of epic battles across planets and moons. Your mission was to construct a formidable base, gather resources and build an unstoppable offensive juggernaut to conquer your opponents. The game's depth was evident with its focus on reconnaissance, stealth, strategic evaluation of units and terrain, you engaged in a story driven campaign against AI or you could challenge your friends and foes in skirmish modes as well and it had a feel of endless replayability. Total Annihilation was groundbreaking in several ways. It featured advanced 3D graphics that were well ahead of its time. With detailed unit animations and dynamic line of sight mechanics, they all just added to the realism and tactical complexity of the game. The strategic depth was evident and further enhanced by the inclusion of unit waypoints, true line of sight mechanics based upon elevation and the iconic and unique field commander unit, all of which contributed to a more immersive and challenging gameplay experience. Critics and players alike praised Total Annihilation. It won awards around the industry and some people place it on that pantheon of among the greatest games of all time. I would be in that camp myself. And for Luke and me personally, Total Annihilation remains one of the best multiplayer experiences we've had to date. Its blend of strategic depth, graphics at the time, and just the sheer replayability and scope of the game makes it a timeless classic that all RTS fans should experience, particularly if you've got some friends in co-op. It is simply a great experience. Let's dive now into a game that massively blends the tactical depth of real-time strategy with the expansive, intricate world building of 4X games. That is Imperium Galactica. Released in 97, it offered a rich tapestry of combat, resource management and colony building, setting it apart from its contemporaries and cementing its place as a classic in the sci-fi strategy genre. You step into the shoes of Dave Johnson, a commander who starts in control of a modest fleet and heading up three colonies. You're confined to your small sector, but your mission takes you to different places and so does your command expand and you eventually end up in control of over 28 capital ships and over 180 fighters in one fleet. The game's narrative is set in the fourth millennium around 3200s and it serves as a compelling entry point that brings the player into a myriad of gameplay mechanics planet management and space battles to ground combat, research and diplomacy. Imperium Galactica steadily reveals its layers as you rise through the ranks from Lieutenant to Grand Admiral, and the story is really enriched with its flashback narrative style that uncovers Johnson's mysterious past. 
It excelled in offering both strategic depth and narrative immersion. And it wasn't just about conquering space, it was about managing your resources, advancing through a complex text tree, and making critical decisions that affected your colonies and fleet. And it blended real-time and turn-based elements and created a dynamic feel to it that kept players engaged for hours on end. Critics loved this game for its innovation and depth, and many highlighted it to be going beyond just simple strategy. They noted the progression of character, your increasing responsibilities, and the total immersion offered by the game that made it a standout title. The legacy of Imperium Galactica is also notable. It spawned a sequel, and the franchise then underwent several changes of ownership, and it led to projects like Galaxy Andromeda and Nexus the Jupiter Incident. But the influence of the original game remains significant. For those who appreciate a blend of tactical combat, deep strategic planning, Imperium Galactica is a gem that stands the test of time, and its complex gameplay mechanics and engaging story make it a must play for anyone who's interested in the history of RTS or 4X as well for that matter. The golden age of RTS games is often considered to have taken place in the late 1990s and early 2000s. This era saw the release of iconic titles like StarCraft, WarCraft 3 and Age of Empires 2, which set the gold standard for the genre. These games introduced deep strategic gameplay, compelling storylines and robust multiplayer experiences that captivated gamers worldwide. The Golden Age established RTS as a dominant genre in the gaming industry, with innovative mechanics and memorable moments that are still celebrated today. StarCraft Released by Blizzard originally in 98, is widely hailed as a monumental achievement in the real-time strategy genre. Development began shortly after the success of Warcraft 2. Initially showcased in 96, it received a slew of criticism for its similarities back to Warcraft 2. However, Blizzard took this feedback to heart and completely overhauled the project. When it was reintroduced, it received an overwhelmingly positive response. One of StarCraft's most revolutionary contributions to the genre was its introduction of three distinct factions, the Terran, Protoss and Zerg. Each faction had unique units and strategies, a feature that set a new standard for game balance and design in RTS games. This innovative approach meant players needed to master different tactics and playstyles, significantly enhancing the game's depth and replayability. The game's narrative was equally compelling. Set in a distant sector of the galaxy, players were to navigate an intricate storyline filled with political intrigue, betrayal and warfare. This added a layer of emotional engagement that is often missing in RTS games even today. But the real thing that set StarCraft apart was its multiplayer mode. It became a cultural phenomenon, particularly in locations like South Korea. The game's balanced factions and competitive depth fostered a thriving esports scene, with professional players and teams participating in televised tournaments and earning sponsorships. This competitive scene was light years ahead of others and it harks more back to what we'd expect from modern esports. Critically, StarCraft re received widespread acclaim. It was praised for its innovative faction design, engaging story and polished gameplay. It set a high watermark for RTS games due to its superb balance and design elegance. The game's voice acting and cutscenes were also highlighted as some of the best in the industry at the time. Despite being over two decades old, StarCraft remains a beloved classic. It sold over 11 million copies worldwide, making it one of the best selling PC games of all time. The game's legacy includes numerous awards and accolades, and many tout it as being one of the greatest games ever made. The game's influence extends beyond its initial release, inspiring a sequel, StarCraft II, and numerous expansions and adaptations. It also maintains a devoted fan base, with players still engaging in both casual and competitive play. This really is one of the Mount Rushmore greats of the RTS genre, and I think it will remain so. Homeworld, developed by Relic Entertainment and published by Sierra Studios, it was launched in September 99 and immediately made waves in the real-time strategy genre against the backdrop of space. This science fiction game follows the dramatic journey of the exiles of the planet of Korak. Korak is decimated for developing hyperspace technology and the survivors with their colossal, iconic mothership embark on a mission to reclaim their ancient homeworld. Along the way, players encounter pirates, mercenaries, traders, rebels, crafting a rich and immersive storyline. One of Homeworld's standout features was its fully three-dimensional space-based combat, allowing players to maneuver their fleets in a 
true 3D environment, a revolutionary step away from the traditional 2D plane. This added a layer of strategic depth that was previously unseen, and it was really unprecedented at the time. Players gather resources, build their fleets, and engage in these tactical space battles. And the fleets carried over between the levels, creating a feeling of continuity and evolving gameplay experience. Homeworld was absolutely showered with accolades, including Best Strategy Game at the 1999 Games Critics Awards. And this was largely in part to its original storyline and absolutely epic score. The legacy of Homeworld extends far beyond its release. It inspired a series of games within the same universe, the standalone expansion Cataclysm, followed up by Homeworld 2 in 2003, and then the prequel Deserts of Crack in 2016. Most recently we had Homeworld 3, which was an absolute travesty in my opinion, and this just goes to show you can have an amazing IP and still mess it up if you don't listen to the gamers and deliver what they want. The impact on the RTS genre of Homeworld cannot be overstated though. It's got an enduring presence in the gaming community and I believe it's going to be a game that stands the test of time. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds is a real-time strategy game that immerses players in the beloved Star Wars universe. Developed by LucasArts and released in November 2001, the game leveraged the familiar and robust Genie engine, the same engine that powered the acclaimed Age of Empires series. In Galactic Battlegrounds, players chose from one of six original factions, and the gameplay revolved around gathering resources such as food, carbon, nova crystals and ore, then you would create buildings, combat units, additional workers and so on. The key to this game's charm was the seamless integration of Star Wars elements within the RTS framework established and known about by players from Age of Empires. The Genie engine provided a solid foundation in ensuring smooth gameplay and a wealth of strategic options, and the blend of classic RTS mechanics and Star Wars lore made this a standout in the genre. Upon release, Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds garnered generally positive reviews, and whilst there were some criticisms that it didn't feel very Star Wars, the game maintained a strong fan base, and this was also reflected in positive sales. Galactic Battlegrounds stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of the Star Wars universe, and in combination with the strategic depth of the Age of Empires series, it brought to life the rich iconic lore of Star Wars in the RTS genre for one of the first times. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War stands as a pivotal title that redefined real-time strategy gaming, leaving an indelible mark both on the genre and its players, myself included in that. At its core, Dawn of War introduced a tactical squad-based gameplay approach that really revolutionised RTS conventions. The battlefield strategy revolved around capturing and securing strategic locations. These key points not only granted resources for constructing units and buildings, but also unlocked pivotal advancements in your tech tree. It was rooted deeply in the rich lore of Warhammer 40,000. The game drew upon the expanded universe crafted by Games Workshop, and you commanded iconic units and characters, each steeped in the distinct grimdark aesthetic and brutal warfare ethos of Warhammer 40k. And this really lended to the authenticity and depth that players felt in every skirmish and campaign map. Upon its release, Dawn of War garnered widespread critical acclaim, propelled by its innovative gameplay mechanics and faithful adaptation of the Warhammer 40k universe. By early 2009, the game and its expansion packs had achieved remarkable sales, exceeding 4 million copies worldwide. Critical reception of Dawn of War praised it for its comprehensive faction diversity and finely balanced units. Complemented by polished visuals and standout animations, it truly was a visual feast as well. In essence, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War remains a cornerstone of RTS gaming and one of my favourite RTSs of all time celebrated for its tactical depth, immersive universe and enduring impact on the gaming landscape. The modern age of RTS began in the mid-2000s and continues to evolve from there. This period is marked from the introduction of more sophisticated graphics, advanced AI and enhanced online multiplayer capabilities. Games like StarCraft II, Company of Heroes and the Total War series have defined this era, with their cinematic progression and presentation and intricate gameplay mechanics. Modern Age also saw the rise of competitive gaming and esports, with RTS titles becoming fixtures in professional gaming tournaments. 
This era reflects the maturation of the genre, blending classic elements with new innovations to keep the strategic experience fresh and engaging. Star Wars Empire at War, released in 2006, stands as a pivotal entry in the realm of real-time strategy sci-fi gaming, as it once again revisits the expansive Star Wars universe. Developed by Petroglyph Games and published by LucasArts, the game delves into the tumultuous period between Episode 3 and Episode 4, focusing on the epic struggle between the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance. Empire at War offered players an immersive blend of strategic depth and thrilling tactical combat. Some features with this were it was a hybrid RTS with turn-based strategy mechanics. So Empire at War innovatively combined strategic planning of RTS gameplay with turn-based elements, allowing players to orchestrate galactic conquests and engage in intense ground and space battles. Throw in rich story and faction diversity, and it gave players a feel they had the command of iconic Star Wars units and heroes across various planets, imparting a strategic significance but also a narrative richness. And the key cornerstone here is the thriving modding community. A vibrant modding scene flourished for Empire at War, and it's extended its longevity far beyond the original release and encapsulates what the game is about in this day and age. Noteworthy mods like Thrawn's Revenge enhanced gameplay by introducing new factions, scenarios, such as playing as Grand Admiral Thrawn in a bid against the New Republic truly epic stuff. While generally well received, Empire at War did face criticism for occasional game crashes during online play and the potential repetitiveness of its battles. However, what really propelled this game forward was its modding scene and the player fan base who embraced it. In summary, Empire at War remains a cornerstone of Star Wars gaming legacy and an RTS staple, celebrated for its immersive storytelling, complexity and enduring appeal within the modding community. It stands as a testament to the enduring fascination with the Star Wars universe and continues to inspire new generations of gamers and modders alike. Sins of a Solar Empire stands as a compelling blend of real-time strategy and 4x elements, transporting players into a vast, star-spanning universe where empires clash amidst the galaxy. Developed by Ironclad Games and published by Stardock Entertainment, Sins of a Solar Empire was released in 2008 to critical acclaim and immediate popularity amongst strategy enthusiasts, embracing the RT4X genre. The game combines the tactical immediacy of real-time strategy with the expansive scope of 4X. Players assume command of a fledgling spacefaring civilization, tasked with expanding their influence across the cosmos through military might, economic prowess and diplomatic finesse. The game's success was underpinned by its innovative approach to strategy gaming. One of the standout features was the ability to transition from commanding entire star systems to individual spacecraft in the midst of battle. This not only enhanced the tactical awareness, but it also provided deep immersion to players into the grandeur of space warfare. Coupled with the intuitive Empire tree and user interface, Sins of a Solar Empire catered to both seasoned strategists and newcomers alike, ensuring that key dynamic duo of accessibility without sacrificing depth. Sins of a Solar Empire was also given numerous accolades upon its release, and many cited it as one of the best strategy games of the year, if not the best. There were some criticisms about the stability of online play, and these still plague the game till today. However, in conclusion, Sins of a Solar Empire continues to captivate strategy enthusiasts and be a cornerstone for the strategic complexity, accessible gameplay, and blend of real-time strategy and 4X elements, maybe lending its lineage a bit back to Imperium Galactica. StarCraft II represented a monumental leap forward in the realms of military science fiction strategy gaming. A sequel that carried forward the legacy of its revered predecessor with renewed vigour and innovation. Set amidst a sprawling galactic conflict, StarCraft II unfolds across a series of three distinct instalments, each delving deep into the lore and gameplay mechanics of its iconic factions. Beyond the captivating single player campaign, StarCraft II revolutionised multiplayer gaming and esports, establishing itself as a cornerstone of competitive gaming worldwide. Esports tournaments flourished, drawing legions of dedicated players and viewers, particularly in South Korea where StarCraft had already cemented its status as a national obsession. The game's depth and perfectly balanced factions, dynamic gameplay mechanics ensured its place at the forefront of ga competitive gaming for years to come. 
In a significant move towards accessibility and community engagement, Blizzard Entertainment Transition, StarCraft 2, multiplayer, co-op features, and single-player campaigns into a free-to-play format in 2017. The strategic decision opened the floodgates for new generations of players to immerse themselves in the thrill of StarCraft 2's intense battles. Commercially, StarCraft 2 soared to unprecedented heights with Wings of Liberty shattering records upon release, selling a staggering 1.8 million copies within the first 48 hours, solidifying its position as the fastest selling strategy game in history. Critically acclaimed, StarCraft II received glowing reviews for its polished gameplay, rich storytelling and meticulous attention to detail. And with success now culminated in over 17.5 million copies of the game and the expansion sold by 2015, Blizzard can proudly declare the franchise lifetime revenue exceeding 1 billion by 2017. In essence, StarCraft II not only expanded upon the groundbreaking legacy of the original, but it also carved out new frontiers in competitive gaming and interactive storytelling. With its free-to-play model and enduring appeal, StarCraft II continues to be a beacon of innovation and excellence in the RTS genre, captivating gamers to this day. The free-to-play era has emerged in recent years, reshaping the landscape of RTS games once again by making high-quality titles accessible to a broader audience. Games like Beyond All Reason and Zero K are leading this charge, offering deep community-driven experiences without upfront cost. These games are developed through open source collaborations and maintained by passionate communities, ensuring ongoing improvements and content updates. The free to play era democratizes the RTS genre, fostering inclusivity and creativity while maintaining the strategic depth and excitement that fans love. Zero K is a unique gem in the realm of real time strategy games. Released in 2017, this free multi platform open source RTS game has carved out its own niche. Initially rooted in the legacy of Total Annihilation, yes, we're going all the way back to 97 here, it was built on the open source Spring Engine. Zero K evolved around by replacing all the proprietary content and introducing a host of innovative features. This transformation has given Zero K its distinct identity, setting it apart from other RTS games. It's an open source and community driven game at the heart of it, so it benefits from continuous enhancements and contributions from a passionate community. This collaborative approach ensures the game remains dynamic and evolves to meet players' needs and expectations. It also leverages Lua scripting, which offers a sophisticated interface for gameplay enhancements. It allows highly customizable and user friendly gaming experience for the players. And Zero K has a flat tech tree unlike other traditional RTS games with a linear tech progression. Zero K gives a more flexible approach allowing players to access advanced units and strategies right from the start. Zero K overall is praised for its depth, innovation and player friendly mechanics. Its open source nature and active modding community are keeping the game relevant and continuously improving and is one of the initial faces of what I would call this free to play era. The game stands as a testament to the power of community-driven development and during appeal of strategic creativity. In summary, Zero K is a standout RTS game for the modern era. Whether you're into sculpting terrain to your advantage, commanding massive armies, or exploring its vast campaign, Zero K offers a rich and rewarding experience for strategy enthusiasts. In a world where MOBAs like Dota and League of Legends have dominated the multiplayer scene for years, it's refreshing to see a game like Beyond All Reason or Bar breathe new life into the real-time strategy genre. This is another free-to-play, community-driven game and it stands out as another beacon for RTS enthusiasts, offering a fresh take on the classic formula. Entirely developed through open source efforts, BAR showcases the passion and dedication of its creators. Although still in the alpha phase, BAR is already making waves as one of the most engaging strategy games you'll play. BAR is revitalizing the RTS genre with cutting edge technology. It utilizes the Recoil game engine, which is an open source platform specifically designed for 3D RTS games. It allows the game to feature over 400 unique units across its two primary factions, Armada and Cortex. Each unit and projectile in BAR operates in real time, with meticulously simulated ballistics, explosion physics and terrain deformation. The strategic depth of the game becomes apparent as mountains obstruct radar, uphill movements slow vehicles, flanking maneuvers provide tactical advantages, and artillery units are unable to fire while retreating. 
it really is the next level in tactical strategic gameplay. And of course, Bar truly shines on large scale conflicts. Intense one on one matches on smaller maps are enjoyable, but the game comes alive for me when you are on a sprawling landscape with 16 or 32 players. The ultra zoom functions allow you to look over the entire battlefield and it creates a visual spectacle of unit and structure icons. And you can draw, type, and ping anywhere to your teammates, enhancing coordination amidst the chaos like you would imagine a real galactic conflict would look like. Currently, Bar is in an open alpha state with continuous refinements and community-driven events. The game may feature cosmetics and paid DLC in the future, but no word on that as of yet. We're still awaiting a Steam release and this is on the horizon, and I think once it does so, it will take it to the next level and be one of the most played RTSs of all time. It's more than just a game, it's a testament to the enduring appeal of RTS. The fact that this owes its lineage back to Total Annihilation is just mind-blowing in my mind and brings this list kind of full circle. Dive in, experience the control chaos of Bar, where every battle is going to be a thrilling spectacle of strategy and skill. Over the decades we've journeyed LT gamers through the evolution of sci-fi RTS games, featuring a bunch of iconic titles. From foundational classics to innovative free-to-play entries, these games have continuously pushed boundaries of strategic gameplay, storytelling, and community engagement throughout the years. Sci-Fi RTS has evolved remarkably, blending complex mechanics with stunning visuals and expansive multiplayer modes. However, I feel the genre has stalled in recent times, particularly due to setbacks with anticipated titles like Homeworld 3. The upcoming release schedule and most played RTS games are predominantly remasters and definitive editions of games from the golden era that I've highlighted, indicating a reliance on past successes rather than groundbreaking new entries. I believe the future of the genre lies in the free-to-play model, which actively brings players into the development process, fostering innovation and a more dynamic evolution of gameplay. Titles like Zero K and Beyond All Reason demonstrate the potential of this approach, offering unique experiences shaped by the community input and ongoing development. If you've enjoyed this exploration of sci-fi RTS games, don't forget to like, subscribe, and please comment your thoughts with your favorite RTS moments or titles through history and what you're looking forward to in the future of the genre. Your support helps us keep the discussion going and makes me uh, want to create more of these style of videos. Thanks for tuning in guys, bye bye now.